on the KFAN social channels. Now it's your reaction to all the action. Vikings fan line. Here's KFAN's Ron Johnson and Eric Northquist. 41-17 the final. The Vikings fall to 12-4. and And it was a border battle bloodbath. At Lambeau, the Packers still in the playoff mix. Just got to beat the Lions. And they will find themselves as the seventh seed in the NFC playoffs. I'm Eric Nordquist from 9 to noon. Ron Johnson is with me. And we're going to get to your phone calls. But first, I believe we should pause for station identification. This is Minnesota Vikings football. The Wild host the Tampa Bay Lightning Wednesday night at 8.30. On the station for Minnesota Wild Hockey, FM 100.3, KFX at Minneapolis, St. Paul, the fan. Max Fuller is screening calls right now, 1-800-320-5326, 1-800-320-5326. Call in, give us your thoughts on that awful game in, in Green Bay. Uh, you can also use the talkback feature on the free iHeartRadio app. Click that microphone, give us your best 30 seconds, and uh, we, will, uh, we will react as we receive them. Uh, before we get Ron's thoughts and hit the phone lines, we do need to jump back to Lambeau, uh, that hellhole. <laughs> I'm kidding. And, uh, and get Tatum Everett as she is in the locker room with Vikings offensive lineman Ezra Cleveland. Down here in the Vikings locker room alongside Ezra Cleveland and Ezra, obviously not the outcome you guys wanted. How tough was it out there once you fell behind in the first half? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we came out, started hot, the punt was blocked, and uh, we weren't able to get it in the goal line. Um, it's just really difficult, you know, losing losing slot on that um, Austin Schlotman on that drive, and then later losing Brian. Mm -hmm. um, but the backups did a great job uh, coming in and filling in for those guys. But we just try to get, uh, when we get some momentum, we just try to capture it and uh, play better. For everyone at home that might not understand how difficult it is to be plugged into a position, have to be ready to either be a guard or a center and, and like understand cadences in, a, in an, an on-road environment, what, what would that have been like for Chris and Oli? Um, you know, uh, they get some reps at practice and stuff, but, you know, you can't replicate, you know, what, how loud Lambo is and stuff. And it's always difficult coming in um, off the bench. Uh, you know, you're sitting there watching the game. You're not warmed up. And you just kind of you kind of get thrown in the fire and you got to uh, kind of survive. And I think they did more than that. They did a good job, you know, coming in, filling in for those guys. And uh, I'm excited to see the tape and see how see how they played. Yeah, obviously you hope for the best for these guys that you play alongside, but it did seem like some of the communication was off at times. There were delay of game penalties, and you uncharacteristically had a few penalties yourself. What do you think led to that? Um, just uh, the chemistry. Um, the chemistry, you know, uh, going with Garrett, Garrett being out, clearly uh, chemistry with him is the highest that it could be. And then having Schlott, you know, we were kind of building up throughout the weeks to get uh, – Mine his relationship better and better and then you know he gets injured and Creed comes in and you don't have the amount of reps you have with the other guys and it just makes it difficult to you know plug and play and do that stuff but I need to be better and uh, that's on me. And then moving forward looking ahead you've obviously have the Bears um, on the road next week you can put this one in the rear view um, what do you think uh, the mindset is moving forward as you close out the regular season? Yep, uh, you know, watch this game, kind of put it in a rearview mirror, like you said, uh, learn from our mistakes and, uh, you know, uh, get onto the Bears and try to be the team that uh, we normally are, you know, uh, scoring touchdowns and having fun out there. Uh, this game was not what, what we like to be, and uh, we're trying to we're, we'll put it away as soon as possible. All right, thanks, Ezra, for your time. Appreciate it. That's offensive lineman Ezra Cleveland with Tatum Everett back in the locker room at Lambeau Field. Thanks to Tatum for all her work covering the team on the road. Ron Johnson joining me now in a game in which absolutely nothing went right, Ron. When the stakes were massive, uh, this team uh, came up with nothing. No answers, health issues, all things considered. Just a terrible performance by the Vikings today. Yeah, it was tempo. It was tempo and tone, and you could see right out the gate the Packers had it and the Vikings didn't. You could see from, I mean, even the, the, the kickoff to start the game, you know, there was a skirmish at the beginning of that. Chris Boyd's in the middle of it. Uh, just looks like the Packers had more guys around it. Every single play. I mean, even uh, K.J. Osborne, I think, getting thrown to the ground, and, and it was a flag, but it was just their intensity. And I tweeted that. I tweeted that. Even if you're losing, at some point you have to play through the whistle and start hitting guys, start chirping a little bit, start talking. Kind of like K.J. Osborne last week when he got the catch and they were down and then all of a sudden he celebrates and everybody's like, oh, okay, we maybe can do this. 
at no point did any Vikings player, as as the game got away from them, look like they still had energy to get it going. And uh, you just didn't feel it. You know, you didn't feel it. And I don't know if it was not having the home crowd or the Packers just had their number. Like they literally, it was just. It was a good old fashioned butt whooping, and there was nothing they could do about it. But you know, some people took it wrong, like, "Oh, you're saying they should illegal." I'm like, "No, you don't hit them." I'm not saying illegal. I'm just saying after the whistle. So the whistle blows. If you are within contact, you have a guy help. Keep playing through the whistle because balls come loose, guys get hit. Like, and you didn't see any of that today. You didn't no. see any of that. They, I, I don't think the Packers felt, even though they won the fight, they still didn't feel like they got into a fight today. When you lose, you need to make sure the other guy you lose to felt like, okay, you you beat me. But or I beat you, but you definitely I, I know we were in a fight and I'm looking forward to it again. The Packers are like, man, I hope we get the seventh seed and the Vikings have the two seed because we will come to Minnesota and punch you in the mouth and you guys can't do anything. And that's how they feel. And within so they held Justin Jefferson and had him feeling a one catch. So they did what they had to do. Yeah, the urgency they showed today, the juice that they had on the field was impressive. And you're right. There was a remarkable contrast to the phone lines. We go 800 320 We'll start with Ben in St. Paul. Welcome to Vikings Fan Line, Ben. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, tough one today as a Vikings fan. Um, biggest issue I have, some of the play calling early on, there's no universe in which Justin Jefferson should not be getting the ball in his hands. I don't care what you got to do. Jair Alexander talking all kinds of smack this week. We're the big dog in the NFC North. We need to be asserting our dominance. And we need to get our best play guy the the ball. I mean, there's no excuse for not getting Jet as the ball here, right? Whether you got to hand it off, Jet sweeps, green plays. I mean, I I don't know that he had a catch in the whole first half. And to me, that's just completely unacceptable. And then, you know, we block the punt. We get it in early, 0-0. And you get cute with the the ball. You're inside the 10 and you go with a, you know, like a a pass play, and then you go with a, a run and then a power eye on third down. It's like you're doing everything backwards here. So just disappointed in the play calling and the scripting early on. Um, but, you know, we got to shake this one off quick and go get the Bears next week. Thanks for taking my call. I'll take your uh, responses offline. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Uh, your thoughts on how they handled uh, getting or implementing and obviously failing to do so, but trying to work J.J. into the offense. Yeah, it, just, it didn't. I agree. It didn't seem like there was a ton of uh, ingenuity or, or innovation or anything new. Um, it was almost one of those things like, I think my guy's better than your guy. Let's line up and see what happens. And the Packers are like, yeah, we're going to we're going to let Jay, Jay, Jair follow him as much as possible because he, he he called for it. And he he whined last time they played him. I wish they would have left me on him. No, he wouldn't have done that against me. Well, well dang, like he, he he said it and he backed it up. Like what? I mean, you can't you can't say anything like you can't get in the media and say anything about Jay Alexander. Besides, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. When you watch him do that to Stephon Diggs, and him and Stephon Diggs got into it in the tunnel, you didn't see J.J. fight early against Jai. You didn't see, you know, you saw him fight against himself. You see him get frustrated with himself. You see him get mad at the, not the ref, but, you know, almost hit a ref in the back of the head with his helmet. Like, all the frustration J.J. showed, it wasn't much towards Jair. And it's one of those things, like, when you're not getting the ball, you it is tough to find that energy you want to fight against a guy. But he didn't see it. Jair Alexander put it in his mind all week. I'm going after this kid. Coach put me on him. But here's the other key about it, too. Let's, let's be for real. They played a lot of cover, too, where Jair could just, like, punch, jam him quick and then get back into his zone coverage. And by doing that, he held, like, everybody knows Justin Jefferson is going to do that wiggle, swaggle. And that's why so many people say there's, there's an elite group of guys that can do that. Tyreek, Stephon Diggs, uh, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson can do it at a high level every time. But if I know I'm a DB, and, and, and I've seen older past DBs make these comments on Twitter, if I know a young guy's going to dance off the line, I'm going to jump across the line and hit him in the face. Because I know you're not going for it. You're not threatening my cushion right away. And that's why some of that stuff eventually is going to get learned. Like, you're going to learn. I, I'm going to watch a guy's feet. If his feet are kind of staggered, I know he's about to do some kind of dancing crossover release. At that point, you just got to speed release. When you see two high safeties, you got a speed release knowing this guy is not playing man. He just wants to jam you and then slow you down so you can't get to his safeties. And that's what happened today. They they played a ton of that blanket coverage. And then when it was zone and Justin Jefferson tried to sit, him and Kirk went on the same page again. So we blamed Jalen Rager last week for that. Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson weren't on the same page either when that middle sit. Justin moved. Kirk threw it the other way. So 
There's some to that, too. Yeah, boomer bust sometimes with his offense. And you look at it, three of the four Vikings losses this year have been games in which five targets today, five targets in that Dallas debacle, uh, six targets, or excuse me, he had 12 targets, but only 48 yards in the Philly game. Yeah. So Justin Jefferson, uh, maybe a learning experience for him, too, because those jams, he was almost paralyzed by it in moments. And it, that was just it. He was no longer an option in that play. Right. And then you got Jair. And and he shouldn't have been flagged for it. I'm glad he wasn't. I mean, he gets the stop on JJ. He's doing the freaking gritty. I mean, how good was he feeling about himself today? He was feeling himself way too much. But this is what I'll say oh, to that. Such a pain in, in the man ass. man coverage, true man coverage, single high, he's not going to quick jam like that because he knows he has no help. When you know you have help, you can go all out. Yeah. And that's, that's what you saw. You saw a guy knew he had help all over the field, bracket. Tony Romo pointed out a couple of times, they're just playing bracket coverage. He's going to jam the crap out of them, knowing he has help inside and over the top. That's when you got to go to K.J. Osborne. He has to be in every progression as number two. Whether Tim or T.J. Hawkinson, Kirk has to know, and he has to come quick. Like the minute he sees it, go. But always look at J.J. first. Always come up with a way to move him and always come up with a way to get him on a guy. Because you even saw when Justin Jefferson was on, I uh, forgot who it was, a linebacker, you could see Alexander actually like saying, like, dude, let's switch. Like, he wanted to go in the slot and put the backer outside and say, hey, you come outside and cover this guy. Like, I don't even know who the heck I'm covering. You come out, but, you know, and it's, he snapped it too quick. But you could see, he was like, uh, you, you shouldn't be on Justin Jefferson. And then Justin Jefferson slips, you know, then the next one. Yeah, Justin I think that was Quay Walker on that interception yep. when, when J.J. slipped. So, yeah. that yeah, that's that's one of those things where you got to see it early and Kirk's got to know it. John in West Virginia. John, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, thank you. Yeah, what a disappointing loss there. Um, and I watched the last uh, overtime there in the 49ers game. Um, so with the 49ers winning in overtime, Minnesota losing, that puts the 49ers in the number two seed pot, sp- spot, I believe, correct? Yep. Yes, it does. Okay, and if we would if we fall down to number three, so the number three seed would end up playing, how will the seeding work? Is there, do we have a clear enough picture to determine who plays who? I mean, we're going to play, won't be Washington, would we end up playing the Giants? Yeah, we uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to hang up on you here, John. Thanks for the call and the question, and we'll explain it. So the Vikings, as the three seed, if they remain the three seed, they will host the New York Giants. The New York Giants are locked into the six seed. They can't be a five. Too much gap. Too much of a gap between them and the Cowboys, and uh, so they will be the six seed. If the Vikings are the three seed, they will host the New York Giants. Now. If the Niners happen to lose to the Arizona Cardinals in the Bay next weekend and the Vikings beat the Bears, then the, then the Vikings would be the second seed. And if they are the second seed and the Packers beat the Lions, we would get border battle part three, Ron. Wouldn't you love that? A U.S. Bank Stadium <laughs> wild card weekend. And, and you know, it's, it's all good. We're all, we're all Vikings fans. We all want the same thing. But I, I was seeing it on social where people – they would rather be the three and face the Giants on Wild Card Weekend than, you know, because for me, I was rooting for Daniel Carlson. Hit that 57-yarder, and he right. did, and they take it to overtime, and then Stidham throws this terrible pick. And uh, and then Robbie Gold, who had missed from 41 uh, to force overtime, is is good from short distance, and the Niners win. I wanted the Raiders to win. I want the two seed. I know as bad as this game was, as much as this thing sucks mm-hmm. in this very moment, you want as many home playoff games as you can possibly get. Yeah. You want your team to win a Super Bowl. Otherwise, why do you watch the games? Right. I just don't I don't understand it. So I, I just saw some of that online today. And and you know, it's it's not that big of a deal. Again, we want the team and we all do want the team to win every single game, but I mean, my god, the 2 seed, that's a big deal and uh and we fumbled it today. Uh Matt in Osakis, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hi, how are you guys doing? Uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Thanks, Um, me too. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Well, I was, uh, I mean, it was an awful game, and uh, if you give up um, a couple scores on special teams and defense, you're not rarely going to win the game. But my biggest concern is on the offensive line. Is there any people out there... uh, off a practice squad or something that could maybe fill in at center. I, I'm hoping that um, our right tackle comes back, that maybe they were had him out precautionary. But uh, is there anything we can do to 
you know, shore that up a little bit. Um, right. Thanks, I'm, Matt. Yeah, the uh, the situation with Schlopman, I mean, you yeah. have the back issue with Garrett Bradbury. Yep. And Schlopman's played in, a, was it two full games? So this would have been his third yep. full start. And then he gets hurt. Now with his fibula, he's probably done for the year. And and Chris Reed, I mean, <laughs> that uh, that was just it was unacceptable. It's 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 this weird it's this weird combo around, right? Like where you uh, you want to say, man, you were in a tough spot, Chris. Right. You know, pat you on the back, like you did what you could, but you also simultaneously have to acknowledge that was terrible. Yeah, and it negatively impacted things. Uh, Ezra Cleveland getting all these penalties called on him, even though the entire line was jumping. Uh, pre uh, snap because the counts were all off and everything. Uh, so I I don't know if you've heard anything, Ron. I have no idea what the status is with Bradbury other than he hasn't practiced in a couple of weeks. Correct. Uh, I have not heard anything. But either. but we need him back. And I don't know what our practice squad looks like for offensive linemen right now. Uh, hoping for good news with the the MRI I saw from O'Connell. Uh, calf issue for him, so he'll get an MRI to determine that. Uh, but quickly. And you played this sport, man. You know how quickly injury situations can turn and suddenly you feel like you've been mostly healthy. Mm-hmm. And now suddenly this this offensive line situation is is even more precarious than someone have looked at it before. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> you got to start looking at the waiver wire. Oh, yeah. You got to check out other teams, practice squad guys, or maybe guys you scouted. Because that's the thing about the scouting department when you look at Chisholm, Oprah, and, and those guys. That's what their job is. They're every week they're scouring the net. They're looking at everybody's waiver wire. They're looking at practice squad guys they faced in preseason. And there's always a guy on the trigger. I mean, honestly, Kevin O'Connell and Andrew Whitworth, you know, I tweeted as a joke, but they have history with the Rams. And he is just doing podcasts right now. So in in the NFL Prime uh deal, hey, if T.O. is working out for people. If uh, uh, what's his name, the dude uh, Josh, whatever, just resigned with the Panthers, um, the cornerback, like oh Josh Norman, Josh Norman, yeah, Kevin O'Connell might as well reach out to Andrew Whitworth because if your tackle can't go, I mean Whitworth can give you, a, I would hope he can give you a game or two if he can get, you know, give him a week to get in shape with the Bears week. I mean he doesn't have to run far, just has to be able to back up and, and protect on that right side. Like I don't know, I don't know because I don't know if that line the way it looked today is gonna do anything in the playoffs. No, I I hope. Chris Reed is practicing. There's there's probably no going to be there, there's not going to be any shirtless chain wearing and song no, singing. No, no, not on that play. But can we get Kirk and Chris Reed on the play on the way home to practice some snaps? Yeah, and maybe try to shore this thing up and, and get some, as many reps in as we can before Soldier. Field. Very interesting. Uh, that's Ron Johnson. I'm Nordo from nine to noon. We got full phone lines. Excited to uh, chat with Owen, Mike, Dan, Katie, Elena. And more, uh, the talkbacks in play as well via the free iHeart radio app. Vikings lose 41-17. Feels like the season's over, but it's not. And uh, we're going to continue to break it down via Vikings fan line. Right here on The Fan, this is Minnesota Vikings football. The holidays are for making memories, and Honda can help. Whether it's hauling presents in a Ridgeline, going sledding in a Pilot, or traveling in a Passport or CRV. Make memories during Happy Honda Days. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2023 Honda CRV, 2.9% APR on a 2022 Passport or 2023 Ridgeline, and a 1.9% APR on a 2022 Pilot. For great deals, visit your greater Twin Cities Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details. Vikings fans, get ready to go deep. Touchdown! As BallySports.com brings Vikings coverage to another level. Intercepted! Go inside the game with real-time scores and stats. Plus, get extra team coverage, game recaps, and weekly breakdowns. It was great to start fast with our opening drive. So you don't miss a moment. All the Vikings coverage you need, all on BallySports.com. Nothing beats being in the stands for a live Minnesota Vikings football. From those nail-biting passes to pivotal plays to the game-winning touchdowns. You can be there for all the action this season. As the official ticket marketplace of the NFL, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of seats so you never miss a game. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash Minnesota Vikings. Get your tickets today. That's Ticketmaster.com slash Minnesota Vikings. With its smart, sustainable solutions, Pentair helps you move water, improve water, and enjoy water for happier, healthier lives. From great-tasting water straight from the kitchen faucet 
to energy-efficient pumping solutions, and everywhere in between. We make the most of life's essential resources. Visit Pintair.com to learn more. Pintair, the official sustainable water partner of the Minnesota Vikings. We are rubes like you, and we talk Vikings football every day, too. Join us weekdays, 9 to noon. Now back to Vikings football. Josiah DeGuara in the eye. It is first and goal from the two. Rogers under center. Puts Tyler Davis in motion to the left. Hand off A.J. Dillon. And he grinds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay Packers. And for A.J. Dillon, that is his seventh touchdown this season. Aaron from under center rolls out to the right. He pumps. Now he gets the five, and Aaron is running to the end zone for his first rushing touchdown this season. And Green Bay stretches the lead to 40 to 3 with 9.25 to go. Hey, just wanted to give you my quick thoughts. I obviously am not terribly fond of the result today. However, going into the year, I thought this was a 9 and 8 team. Uh, this is a pleasant surprise, and the outcome of being a three seed and playing the Giants is not all that bad. Uh, I think most of us would agree we'd prefer that rather than play a red-hot Packers as a seven seed. So it's not great, but given where we thought we'd be, I'll take it. Thanks for the talk back. Talk backs via the free iHeartRadio app. I would always prefer to be a two seed then beat the Packers and maybe get to host the Niners versus going to the Bay. But I appreciate the sentiment for sure. And yeah, if you thought this was a nine win team and here they are at 12 and four and just uh, waiting to hoist that division banner, feeling good about themselves and a three seed, um, certainly positivity abound. And again, the season's not over. Certainly it's Vikings fan line, 41, 17, the final, that game was over (laughs) pretty freaking quickly. Probably should have just packed it in as soon as we couldn't get it in from the one after that Josh Metellus blocked punt. Uh, Ron Johnson is with me, Nordo, from 9 to noon. How about Josh Metellus, by the way? Hell, I, heck, I, of a, heck of a game. I saw I saw the Vikings tweet something, you know, trying to find positives amongst uh, the uh, the heaps of negativity with this game. But Josh Metellus back-to-back blocked punts. I think the first time since like 95 or something like that. Yeah. So uh, good for Josh, no doubt about it. Uh, thanks for calling, 800-320-5326, 1-800-320-5326. Dan in Oakdale, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, how you doing tonight? Good, thank you. I, uh, you know, a couple of the uh, previous callers have talked about what I was thinking about most, but with the offensive line injuries, but uh i've uh i've been a real big optimist and uh, and uh and the vikings have come through over and over again but with with the offensive line injuries today i just didn't feel it <laughs> you know it just uh reed really struggled especially you know being on the road it's pretty tough but uh I uh, I'm optimistic that if, if you know he gets a good week of practice next week or whatever, there's I think he'll do have a better game. But All right, other, thanks, other than man. that, you know, I I, I I still have faith. You know? I like it. I dig it. Thanks, Dan. Have a great one. Katie and Eden Prairie, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Katie. Wondering if the special team coaches should be under fire today after their performance. Okay. Giving up touchdowns, must punts, miss kicks. It really seemed to change the momentum of today's game. No, I appreciate the thought, Katie. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Um, Matt Daniels and Ben Katwika. Special teams unit had a tough one today, Ron. That uh, it was, I believe, it's Keyshawn or Kayshawn Nixon. Yep, um, he was kind of iffy into the game in terms of his health. But last week, in which he, I think, was injured on the play, had like a ninety-three yard kick return, didn't result in a touchdown. And but but he's been showing fire and ramping it up, and we knew that he was going to be a tough get today. But the combination of that, I agree with Katie, it absolutely changed the momentum of the game. At one point, they had. Uh, two touchdowns, and neither of them came from the freaking offense. Right. Uh, with the pick six, uh, Darnell Savage as well. So uh, the combination of that 
And then Greg, Greg has down, now done this a couple of times this year, Ron, where he uh, he breaks our hearts and then he brings us back, Ron. Yep. And the last four games brought us back. The 61 yarder, dig that. Uh, he hasn't missed. Uh, I think he hadn't missed a field goal since week eight against Arizona. Hadn't missed an extra point since the Thanksgiving game uh, against New England. And then today from 46-ish or wherever it was, and then that second one from 50, I mean, that that kicker, uh, that Ohio State kicker, Ruggles. Yeah. Did you watch that last night? <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I mean, neither of them were as bad as that. Right. But they were pretty bad. Yeah, this is what I'll say. The kicker, I don't know if we're going to fire the special teams. No, people. no. Yeah, the kicker missing kicks is not on the coach. Like, he's made them. He, like I said, it's like golf, and I don't I don't think you're a big golfer, but golf's kind of the same way where you can have a terrible day. You think I can't golf? I don't, I don't feel like you're a big golfer. Well, I, I know you swing. golf. I'm, okay, you I'm literally a big golfer, but I'm not <laughs> figuratively, like, into it. So then, you know, I'm talking about that because you probably play with meat sauce, and so you could have a horrible day the entire day. And then all of a sudden you have a great drive on 18, oh, yeah. another good shot. And then you, you you go, you know, birdie or par and you're like, man, it's a great game, you know, and it brings you back. And that's what Greg Joseph tends to do. Like he tends to, you're like, oh, I can't believe. It. And then all of a sudden he'll, he'll do something. You're like, yep, we love him. And so that's why he has it. It's just today he didn't. So you can't blame that on the coaches. The kick return. You have to go back and look at the scheme. Did the kicker put the ball in the wrong spot? Was it just missed tackles? Again, you can't put that on the coaches. Uh, if there was pump blocks and all of that kind of stuff, then you could say, okay, what the heck are you teaching these guys? But some of that stuff was just effort. That was just effort. That's all that was. And and to miss tackles. Uh, but then you have to flip side it, and Josh mattel has got a pump block. So they drew up a perfect, you know, punt rush scheme. Josh mattel has got home twice. So, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's definitely something to, you know, look at the kicker, keep an eye on it for next week. Uh, you're on the road again. Uh, special teams-wise, if the special teams kickoff team is fine, they're fine. You know, but if it's if it is all of a sudden, it could just be effort and just lackadaisical. Like, oh, man, we got this game. We're, we're in the playoffs. Let's get ready for next week. And, you know, it's not over yet. So, I mean, they're in the playoffs, but that seeding can change. So, who knows? But, no, I don't think they get fired. Elena in Elk River. Welcome to Vikings fan line, Elena. Hi. Hi there. Um, I was just wondering, I wanted to address Dalvin Cook, and as much as I love him, I'm wondering if it's at all concerning that he has so many negative plays, and is it just his inability to run the ball, or is it the run block, and are all these negative, bad plays, are they really worth the good ones? I appreciate it, Elena. It's yeah. the blocking. I think period. it's the blocking. It's too. the blocking period. Yeah, he was getting hit before he could even put his foot in the ground. So yeah, and 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 it's part of the run blitz. I, what I noticed in the passing game is Kirk Cousins does a lot more fake goals and and you know and kill kill kills and walks around in the run game. He kind of gets to the line and just looks around and then runs the play. So so I feel like not say he's tipping his hat, but he's like there was times where I thought the Packers jumped off sides. They were over the ball so quick, like it, it and they might have. Who knows. But it felt like I saw the defensive tackles move before the line, the Vikings offensive line even got going. So I don't know if, again, I don't know if it's they need to go on two a little bit more. They need to go on three count. I know on the road you try not to do that because your guys can't hear. But, you know, and that's part of it. You know they can't hear. So you know on the road if your crowd's loud, it's going to be on one. Yeah. Or it's going to be on the go or it's going to be on my whatever. You know, defensive line, they're paying attention to that stuff too. So it's. Yeah, it's on the line. No, that's not Dalvin. Yeah, it's it's tough because I think it's it's a function of the line and the run block. But then part of that, it's not, it's not like our offensive line just forgot to block like they did last year right. or the year before, where Garrett Bradbury really the problem for the the biggest stretch of his career was his inability to protect Kirk Cousins. But he was fast and athletic, and in the previous regime scheme, he was very good at getting to the second level and making way. For number 33, now number four. Right. The running out of the gun, the the the, the lack of consistency in terms of rhythm and reps. Uh, I mean, by the way, sneakily, Dalvin Cook, sixth in the NFL in rushing. And that's at four and a half a clip. He has far fewer carries than most of the running backs that are above him. Mm -hmm. It's not a function of him not being productive. I think it's more or less how we implement the run in the offense. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you can look at the massive drop-off. How about uh, Alexander Madison and just how few 
uh, his reps and opportunities have been, and save for filling in when Dalvin, when he misses games, he's nearly a non-factor in almost right. each and every game outside of pass protection and the occasional sneaky screen. So I, I'm not I'm not worried about Dalvin at all. I am worried about the run game as it exists in this offense. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, and I what I think is the, the, part of running the ball is a mentality, and the Packers had it. The 49ers have it. Like some teams just have it when they get to the I'm line of scrimmage. Just mowing us down today. That's what I mean. Like when they get to like Aaron Jones looked like he was in a different gear than the rest of the defense. Yeah. I mean, there were times where Cam Bynum made a big hit. Uh, Brian Osamoy, you see him flying around, but that was far and few between. Where you always saw Aaron Jones on a toss or some. This is not an offensive line that's built to run the ball up the middle down your throat. You have to get Dalvin Cook on the edge. So whether it's a toss flip or a counter flip or just toss it like the Packers do. Put four guys on one side, motion a guy over there, and just toss it and say, hey, let's put my bigs on your bigs, your uglies on my uglies. See who wins. And that's what the Packers and the 49ers do well. And that's why C.J. Helm has to be in there more. Like, yeah. if you're going to run the ball, just say, hey, we're running the ball. I'm putting my battering ram in. He's going to lead the way. I want to see you try to stop it. I I would put my money on C.J. Ham 10 times out of 10 leading the way through a hole that he's not going to lose that battle. 10 times out of 10, you let him run full speed through a hole, C.J. Ham will not lose. That's what I understand. Just do it. Let Dalvin follow him. That's where they were successful last year, the year before, and the year before that in the run game when C.J. Ham was the lead blocker. Yeah. Like, I get this is his offense with the single back and all that, but, hey, if you want to run the ball, run the ball. If you don't, you don't need to have a $50 million running back. Right. Is that simple? And and the and the key to that too, though, Ron, is that we're sixteen games into this now. Yeah, it's I mean, too it's, late now. We, yeah. we can talk about all the CJ <laughs> reps, right? And I was rooting for it. Just we like said it's you, since week seven. We've been talking about yeah. this for three freaking months. Yeah, the run game sucks. And so, as a new head coach, again, not an indictment of the coach in totality, but this is one aspect of the offense that is terrible, yeah. and it has now been terrible for the most part through sixteen games. And uh, and and. That's where we're getting a ton of questions. Got to cut Dalvin because he's so expensive and he's not right. good anymore. No, he's good. It's really good. Our run scheme is not good. And and that presents that presents problems, which then leads people to talking about dollar values and, and all of those things. Uh, 41-17, that's not good, was the score today at Lambeau. Vikings lose, fall to 12-4. and four. They're now currently the third seed in the NFC playoff race, which uh, the New York Giants are indeed locked into the sixth seed. So if the Vikings stay the three seed... They will be hosting the New York Giants on Wild Card Weekend. Times to be determined. Mike, Jack, Chris, Will, Leo, talkbacks via the free iHeartRadio app. We're going to get to them all. Ron Johnson's here. I'm Nordo from 9 to noon. Trying to unpack this thing. This is Fan Line. This is Minnesota Vikings football. At Evans, we know that defense and big stops wins you championships. But when it comes to logistics, moving forward is key. Ben Lieber here for my guys at Evans. If logistics were football, Evans would be an explosive offense, dropping dimes and hitting the gritty. Make Evans your favorite logistics team today. Evans will be your signal caller. You can jump on their backs and ride to victory. Get ahead of the competition right now and have a great experience while you're at it. Visit EvansTrans.com. Again, EvansTrans.com. When the game is over, it's time to relax. No matter if it's a win or loss, you always win at Spalon Montage, the Twin Cities' premier salon and spa destination for over 25 years. With convenient locations in Edina, Woodbury, and Chanhassen, there is a Spalon close to you. Right now, football fans, you can get a bonus when you give the gift of Spalon. Purchase a $150 gift certificate and receive a $25 gift card for yourself. Visit Spalon.com now or call 952-915-2900. As a proud partner of the Minnesota Vikings, Pendleton Whiskey is your perfect companion on game day. Regarded as the whiskey of true Western tradition, Pendleton Whiskey captures the unique spirit of the brave and bold adventurer in every bottle. Made with the finest northern grains and cut with Mount Hood Glacier water. Grab every Viking game day by the horns with Pendleton Whiskey. Pendleton Distillers, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Please drink responsibly. Letter Buck. The Yaller Horn has spoken. It's saying, when the Vikings win, Vikings fans win. Because this season, Vikings fans get a free Big Mac from McDonald's after every Vikings victory. Yes, you heard the horn correctly. All week long after a Vikings win, get a free Big Mac with a minimum purchase of $1. Available only on the McDonald's app. Victory never tasted so delicious. 
Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. The Wild host the Tampa Bay Lightning Wednesday night at 8.30 on the station for Minnesota Wild Hockey. FM 100.3 KFAN, The Fan. Hey, Monte Nordo, what do we think about the block punt? And then in the ensuing possession for the Vikings, we end up going 3 and out from the goal line, and not once did we see C.J. Ham line up or even get a touch. I'm having a hard time understanding the run scheme when things get tight. Uh, the jet sweeps, the fly motions, they're not working. Nobody's biting on it. Inside the tackles is tough. Yeah, couldn't agree. Couldn't agree more, as a matter of fact. A little cute in the red zone, end up settling for the field goal. And yeah. if only we knew from there on out, Ron, that uh, things would go the way that they did, we would have uh, worked on taking the decorations down from the holidays, get the tree out yep. on the curb so it can get picked up tomorrow. We maybe would have found better things to do. But yeah. Our favorite football team, we adore them, and we want them to win every game, but they didn't win this one. 41-17, the final. Uh, Packers take border battle 125. They improved to 8-8. Eight and eight. They just got to beat the Lions, I believe, and they're in the playoffs uh, next week. And uh, the Vikings uh, now pretty much locked into uh, the three seed unless uh, we win against the Bears and the Niners lose at home to a Colt McCoy or Trace McSorley. Don't sleep on McSorley, uh, led Arizona Cardinals team. 800-320-5326. 1-800-320-5326. And you heard those talkbacks. You can do that on the free iHeartRadio app. Back to the phone lines. Uh, Mike in California. Mike, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, I just want to talk briefly about just the state of this franchise. Um, I believe the Vikings have been to the most NFC Championship games. <clears throat> and we've gotten killed in them second when i mean a franchise i'm not saying we're the packers or dallas or steelers or whatever but it's still a respectable franchise and you look at teams like tampa bay who have been garbage for years won two super bowls seattle wasn't very good they've won super bowls all these teams and we can't even get to a super bowl what since the last time what was it 76 and what are we doing here i mean it, we got to be better than this. I, it's just driving. I mean, fan, and I know like everyone else, we're frustrated. But you know, I mean, we've had what a million quarterbacks in the last ten years. You look at someone like Green Bay; they've had two in almost forty years with Rodgers and Favre. And granted, yeah, they've only won two Super Bowls with them. But hey, they're still top-notch players. I just don't see. I, I, I get you. I, yep, I got but, you, man. I got you, Mike. I really appreciate you calling in and, and all of those things. But the uh, yeah, the key the key there is uh, we uh, we haven't won a Super Bowl, but we did just lose a regular season game today. It is important to note that we have one regular season game left on the schedule. That's at Soldier Field. Yep. Recently, we've played pretty well there, and as long as we don't let uh, Mr. Fields run for three hundred yards on us. Their defense is putrid, and we hopefully will finish the regular season 13-4. and four. And we got a playoff game, Ron. Yeah, I'm not ready to go down the Super Bowl uh, lore or lack thereof uh, our, our, in terms of our, our commitment to futility in the postseason. I'm not ready for that yet, are you? No. 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 They're good. I mean, that was chip chair and a chance. Chip chair and a chance. And it's not like they're the seventh seed. So, like Tony Romo said, they didn't win 12 games by being bad. Yeah. So they just got to figure it out. The good stuff is not fluky. The bad stuff is not fluky. And we find ourselves somewhere in the middle. Chris in Owatonna, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. What's up, Chris? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for taking my call. Um, a couple of things came up while I was listening, but I'll only take 20 seconds uh, regardless. First off, uh, I actually feel like let's relax. We are still 12-4, are still kings of the North in the playoffs. 
Secondly, I actually kind of feel like that first quarter went as good as it possibly could have for us. Blocked punt, uh, strip sack, and we just gave it all away. But the main point would be, I'm wondering as someone who's been watching the team for a while, I can't remember if it was Childress or Tice in 2000 with the 41 donut. And then obviously in 2017 with the Philadelphia game. And then now today with the million, with the complete coaching and quote unquote culture turnovers that we've had and team turnovers, what is the through line that keeps us having us showing up to quote unquote big games, seemingly completely unprepared. And we've had multiple cultures, multiple cultures. Why does that keep happening as someone who just seems to see it happen over and over again? Um, I guess that's all I got. I will hang up and let you guys pontificate. I appreciate you taking my call. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I don't know if you had a stopwatch there, Chris. You went for about 50 seconds, not 20. But uh, <laughs> but thank you for the call. Yeah, the that that do you look at with the way this team has gone? And, yeah. You know, for instance, uh, I would just kind of take – we've averaged nearly 29 points a game in our wins, 12 and a half in our losses. And and maybe this is a growth step for for Kevin O'Connell, but th- where I'm going with this, I don't believe this is a function of a lack of preparation. Right. Um, I think that they put a full week in. They were excited about what they put together for mm-hmm. this border battle. It didn't work, and we didn't recover. And so now we've watched it happen four times, really, and and even in I, I should I should say three of the four that Lions game still I, I don't want, it's not an enigma per se uh, we lose the game in Detroit, but you put you wanted Justin Jefferson to go off that game he had 223 yards that game right so there were certain aspects that were working uh, in the end we just couldn't stop uh, Goff and, and company but yeah. in three of those losses it's like we came to work with an idea that idea wasn't good and we just didn't pivot and we just laid down and got run over by the train right yeah i mean there's a lot of things you could look at we can all be sunday night or monday morning co- you know coordinators and think we have an idea at the end of the day you practice all week you go over stuff you think it's going to work of course you're looking at favorable matchups in practice it's not yeah. you know you can't get hit as a quarterback there's a lot that goes, you know, your offensive line is not really getting beat up as much as they would in a real game. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> you have to be able to pivot. You have to be able to, on a dime, say, this is not working. So whether it's like the, the one caller said, the jet sweep motion, they weren't moving. So clearly they're telling you we're in a zone. So in that instance, stop, reset the play. And again, I keep going back to guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. You see them do this all the time. And Kirk. And <laughs> I wish. <laughs> and they change everything because they know it's zone so if i know it's zone every coach and quarterback has zone beaters if i know it's zone run my zone beaters whether it's a big post over the top because it's cover two and then a skinny post up the seam because that safety on that front side he he's putting a bind backside run a corner so if i have a big post skinny up the seam and then a corner i have three guys running at two safeties they can't cover all three now you do need time though because i know people are you can't do that if you have time that's true you need time, but figure out how to manufacture time, whether it's fake snaps, fake goals, do something to get the defensive line to slow down a little bit. Maybe, you know, get off kilter and then snap the ball. Like there's all like Aaron Rodgers kept doing that to the Vikings. He kept messing with the motion and moving guys around. Like, again, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers. I get it. He is one of, he's a hall of famer. He's going to go down as one of the best in, in NFL history, but that stuff has to happen. You have yeah. to come up with your, like when you know it's zone, guys aren't chasing your guy. You got to come up with, you got to switch the play to a zone beater right away and give your quarterback that ability. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I, I, again, I, I also agree with just throw the ball. Like, if, if, if you know Jai Alexander is super aggressive on Justin Jefferson, run a screen to Justin Jefferson and let an offensive lineman just come barreling full speed at Jai Alexander because he's not paying attention. He's going to have blinders on because he wants to beat Justin Jefferson so bad. You could kill him. You could literally kill because he's not looking. He's, his head's not on the swivel right. for uh, for inside guys coming out to block him. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Fake tunnel screens, run a go. I mean, there's a lot of like there's a lot of stuff you could have done to Jay Alexander using his aggressiveness against him, and you didn't see it. You didn't see any double moves. And I, again, you got to watch the all twenty. I know he watched the all twenty two. He didn't have time. Kirk couldn't do all that. But you have to be able to. You have to be able to come up with some of that stuff. And even if it's tempo, go tempo, tempo, and get them out of that ability to rush. Because when they went tempo on the Vikings. The Vikings could only rush three at that point because they're like, we got to back up and play coverage. Do the same thing to them. Like, mm. force them into some kind of coverage you know you're going to get and a rush where they can't just blitz you every time. 
That's Ron Johnson. I'm Eric Nordquist. Vikings lose 41-17. Jeremy, Joe, Jack, Will, Leo, we will get to your phone calls, talkbacks via the free iHeartRadio app as well. One more segment uh, here on the Greater Vikings Radio Network of Fan Line, but then you can via the free iHeartRadio app or locally in the Twin Cities, 100.3 FM. The fan continue to listen to us. We're going to be here for a while. Uh, break this thing down. The Vikings at 12-4, and four, third seed in the NFC playoff race. Just one regular season game remaining against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field next weekend. And then it's off to the playoffs where the Vikings are going to host, as of now, at least one playoff game. That's kind of cool, right? Got to remember that, I suppose, while we're still very, very annoyed with what we watched today. Stay on hold. We'll take your calls. Continue to break down the purple. It's Vikings Fan Line on KFAN and the Minnesota Vikings Radio Network. Welcome to the fourth industrial revolution, a revolution powered by data and applications, AI and IoT. And now there's one company born to enable it, Lumen, the platform for next generation business that combines adaptive networking, edge cloud, connected security and collaboration. Lumen delivers the next gen architecture that next gen apps require. Say hello to Lumen, the platform for amazing things. Learn more at Lumen.com. Hey fans, Pilot Games has teamed up with the Minnesota Vikings to create the Vikings Victory electronic pull tab game. Play in more than 1,700 bars across the state and win up to $1,500 in the Skull bonus game. Pilot Games is the largest charitable gaming provider in the state. When you play Vikings Victory, your community wins. Play Vikings Victory today, anywhere Pilot's electronic pull tabs are offered. Visit PilotGames.com for more information. Hey, Vikings fans, when you stay at Omni Viking Lakes, you stay at the official hotel of your favorite team. We built this place just for real fans like yourself, even putting it right next to the practice facility. Walk in the hotel, and it's like walking into Vikings heaven. You've dreamt of a place like this, and now you can dream in a place like this. Score! So, Vikings fans, when you're looking for a place to stay, stay in the game at Omni Viking Lakes, the official hotel of the Minnesota Vikings. If you're a window installer, keep it simple. Choose Anderson 400 Series Windows. They're the Cladwood Windows contractors trust the most. So much so, they're the Windows contractors trust for their own homes. And with fewer callbacks, the choice is simple. It's Anderson 400 Series Windows. The Windows contractors trust the most. Get started at andersonwindows.com today. Claims based on 2022 Anderson brand survey of U.S. contractors. Listen tomorrow as our know-it-alls tell you what the Vikings should have done better today. The Power Trip, PA, Common, and Barrero are all back and live tomorrow. Now back to Vikings football on KFAN. Second and 11, four-man rush. Rodgers looks left, now goes on a deeper drop. He throws to the end zone. Robert Tunyon is uncovered. Touchdown, Green Bay Packers. For Robert Tunyon, his second touchdown this season, he was basically uncovered. It's a 21-yard score, and Green Bay leads 23-3. That's the first offensive touchdown of the border battle. Hi there, John from Stillwater. I'm calling him out, um, Donatel. Do you think it's time uh, to move on from him after today's performance and uh, witnessing some of the poor performances out of our defense this season? Um, I'm not saying getting rid of him this season, but we need a new one for next season. And do you think he can save his job if he can turn things around next week and we make a good run in the playoffs and the defense plays well? That's courtesy of the free iHeartRadio app, the talkback feature. Hit that microphone, give us your best 30 seconds. And Tenna B or Max Fuller will air it, and we shall discuss. It's Vikings fan line, 41-17, the final. The Vikings lose. They got their asses kicked by the Green Bay Packers. And they are now, uh, after border battle 125, they are 12-4 and in the season, third in the NFC. Still division champion, still hosting a playoff game. Stings a little bit, though, as the Niners beat the Raiders. And they took over that two spot in the playoff race. I'm Nordo from 9 to noon. Ron Johnson is with me. And to that talk back, uh, first and foremost, I, I just don't see how Ed Donatel would be relieved of his duties at uh, at any point in season. So, right. but And he even himself in the talk back kind of noted like after this season. Uh, your thoughts on that? Moving from a 4-3 to a 3-4 has not worked. I still... I still have questions about whether it's schematics or talent. Right. And there are some areas where we have a dearth of talent on this defense. Mm -hmm. 
and we can look at the opportunism of turnovers and we didn't create any today. That's been part of a problem in, in the recent months or excuse me, over the last month, having trouble taking the ball away. Uh, but your thoughts on on this defense moving forward into 2023? Yeah, that's that's a tough one. I, I mean, honestly, Ed Donatel, he has a he has a, a a bevy of wealth of knowledge. Like he, he knows a lot about this game of football. He knows a lot about the three four. Uh, I question whether Wes Phillips' dad would ever help out and you know be a, a guy to be up there. Uh, I even said I don't think you should fire him. He definitely knows how to put something together. Uh, it's whether he's calling it at the right times or like he said. I mean, honestly. I don't think he threw players under the bus by saying some of this execution isn't happening. What we don't know is what he's teaching because there's a lot that goes into teaching a defense, just like a receiver, a running back, and an offense. Like when you say line up on the numbers, you mean on the numbers. And in a route, you either have to be on the top of the numbers or the bottom of the numbers. You have to be two yards inside the numbers. You have to be on the hash, two yards outside the hash. Like every single play, they have to be in a specific spot. And if you're a little bit off, that's when you see bad throws. So, for this defense lining up, the one thing I, I do question is the amount of pressure or the lack of when you have a guy like Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith, when clearly Daniil is suited to have his hand in the ground. So after this weekend, watching TCU in that 335, watching Syracuse in that 335, the one thing I notice about that is one, you're prepared for a passing team. So you always have five DBs in the game. One of your DBs is kind of like a big nickel, like a J. Ron Curse or like a Cam Bynum who can cover and play backer if you need him or Brian Asamoah. And then you do have your three down linemen, one nose, two ends, which could be Daniil at the one end and then another end like DJ Wanham. Zadarius becomes your backer with Kendricks and whoever. It could be Hicks. Now you can play those gaps. Zadarius is your automatic fourth rusher every time. Your fifth rusher becomes somebody else. So they're, I'm not saying they're going to go to 3-3-5, three, three, but it can be done too because it's similar to a 3-4. You just don't have true DN integrity. And when you're playing a team like Green Bay, who runs the ball, yeah, maybe you need to be able to switch. Like, switching to a 4-3 is literally just gaps, and you're putting four D linemen in because it's the same as when you go goal line and you say, okay, all my bigs elephant is what they call it. Get in. Or all you guys are in. So you can do it. It's it just you have to practice it. How much time do you have to dedicate to it? How many mistakes would guys make? Because that's not the you know that's not what we built all offseason in OTAs. There's a lot of verbiage that goes on. But I, I do question that because the 4-3, it's about who you have. The 3-4 works if you have a T.J. Watt, if you have a Zadarius. Like, if you're going to go true 3-4, again, that's like, is Daniil's value in the dollars worth it? Unless you're going to let him do what he does best, which is put his hand on the ground and get up to the quarterback. You know, I don't know how long you give him to learn how to stand up and, and create pressure like DeMarcus uh, Ware does, but who knows? You know, you like DeMarcus Ware, Lawrence, all those guys. Like, those guys, I don't know if that's what they did and they built, built to do it, but his hand is in the ground. He's better. So, yeah, I don't know if Kevin O'Connell can make that switch next year and say, hey, we're going to go to a 4-3. I got to go find me a 4-3 defensive coordinator. But that's, we'll see. Let's rock some phone calls. 800-320-5326. Jack in Rice Lake. Welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Uh, hello. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I think our defense played good enough the first half with the turnovers to give our offense, but they didn't do nothing with the ball. And the other thing I got to say is, why, when we're down 30 points or what in the fourth quarter, that you got Kirk Cousins in there and some of these starters, the chance of getting hurt. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Yeah, I was kind of wondering. Let's go to let's go to Nick Mullins and let's just keep eight on the bench. <laughs> any any reps we can take off of him when he's getting hit yeah, as much true. as he is, is is a good thing. Will in Des Moines, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Will? Hey there, thanks Hi. for taking my call. Uh, my question was maybe a bit more for Ron. Uh, just trying to take everything in perspective. It's just one game. I get all of that. Try not to overact, overreact. But when I kind of step back and look at the season as a whole for the Vikings, it seems like we're just sort of addicted to either these close games or situations where we need to find some sort of spark. Um, and I guess I'm just worried going forward if in those games where we can't find that, we need to be able to kind of have some proactiveness early in the game to, to give ourselves a bit more of a cushion. Um, is there something psychologically to that as players? Do you feel that? Um, that's all. I'm just curious what you guys are thinking about that. Um, so I'll hang up and listen. Thanks for taking the call. Yeah, I appreciate it. Slow starting team. 
We're constantly playing from behind, Ron. Yeah, so, and it goes back to my point of, like, doing something different. You know, that first 15 plays for Kevin O'Connell has historically, those first, whatever, 10, 12 weeks were great. He was the best coach in the NFL as far as that goes, or scripting, or best offensive coach in the NFL, scripting those first 15. I think we, we scored on our first possession seven of the first 11 games. Yep. And that was the most in the NFL at that point. Now, as we look at it five weeks later, it's not necessarily the same case. Because you put stuff on film. And so now all these new coaches playing you and teams that are playing you for the second time can go back and watch tape and say, hey, this is their tendency. Let's make sure we do this and see if we can get them out of their tendency. If they stick to it, we got them where we want them. <clears throat> Kevin O'Connor has to know, like, my tendency is not no huddle to start a game. My tendency is not to go hurry, hurry, hurry to start a game. Let's try it. See what happens. Kirk Cousins, you just come. I want you. I, I got my 15 plays. As long as we have a, a, a semi-loose huddle and you're not at the line of scrimmage, I can talk to you up until 15 seconds, seconds before the clock. Boom, let's try it. You know, that's the kind of things where I think he's smart enough. Kirk Cousins is smart enough where they can accomplish enough hand signals to get the players going. And with a loose huddle, too, the players closest to the sideline can get the call from the sideline as well. And then Kirk just has to relate to the other side. So there is a way to do it. And then all he has to do is go get the protection to the offensive line. The guard's going to tell you who's the mic. Boom, let's go. But then we're moving fast. And then if we catch a team, because if we don't sub, they don't. We I don't have to give them time to sub. So then I can catch them tired. I can catch that big offensive line who started the game, who normally subs out in third down situations, who has to stay in now until I'm done, you know, carving you up. So I, I, that has to be looked at. And I don't know if maybe the Bears' week is a week to try it. Um, I mean, I don't think you hold back for the playoffs and all of a sudden the first playoff game you decide to do it. I mean, whether you do it or not, you put it on tape. And now that's something extra a defense coordinator has to prepare for going into the playoffs. Yeah, we don't sub, they don't sub, but we went three and out a lot. Yeah. So we actually didn't wear them out as much as no, we had intended. Sure didn't. Uh, Leo in Bloomington, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, guys. Um, I really don't blame this game on Kirk so much. Kirk O'Daddy, he threw three, three interceptions. Two of them really wasn't his fault. Last one was in desperation mode. And, um, the Giants, Giants are a six seed, so I think we should probably rest the starters. We don't want injuries hurting us. But, um, yeah, that's my take. I'll let you guys go while I cry in my car and uh, smoke on this J. Jettis pack. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Uh, the So I'm annoyed with Kirk, and mm -hmm. whether it was J.J. falling down, uh, I thought Hawkinson had an, I mean, as bad a start to this game as you possibly could. I yeah. didn't think he was fighting for the ball. And this this is a thing with Hawkinson where we love the 13, 109, and two touchdowns last week, but he's going to drop some passes, yeah. and he's going to make you tear hair out of your head and cry in your car like Leo currently is uh, somewhere in the South Metro. Um, where, where Kirk gets me, and you were, you were kind of regaling, you know, whether it was Peyton and it was Tom Brady, their ability to maneuver things at the line, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, one of Aaron Rodgers' best traits, I think, over the course of his career is just this, I mean, just this instinct of pocket presence. Yeah. And he can feel you coming um, in terms of the pass rush. Yeah. Uh, and and so Kirk doesn't. And I know, you know, it's 27-3. It's midway through the third quarter. And, and finally, just as it happens in all these damn games, which is if any rubes out there and you're just pissed, you know, the, the call about the deficits and things. What what the hell happens every single week where something just finally clicks? Mm -hmm. And it happens to this team every single week. We're clicking. We're, we're moving chains. Barely have any second downs. It's 16 yards here, 19 yards here. We're, we're mowing them down in the third quarter. And then the strip sack happens. Yeah. And it's just, it's just I don't get it where such a cerebral, intelligent guy like Kirk loses himself in these moments. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the fumbles before, specifically in 2018, when they were at their worst, uh, it was Jerry Hughes uh, in the Buffalo game. I think Minka Fitzpatrick had uh, had a, a fumble recovery touchdown. I know Buda Baker, I think, did just completely disastrous. How about Jeremy Chin a couple of years ago with the with the Carolina Panthers? We've seen these fumbles with Kirk. I just don't understand how this never gets better. And, and maybe it is just true. It's an it's an unteachable, intuitive skill or trait that mm -hmm. an Aaron Rodgers has and Kirk doesn't. But he didn't lose this game for him. I, I agree that, with that. But, man, he pissed me off on that strip sack. You have to know these guys are coming. And he does not. Yeah. And he puts himself in some of those positions. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know what that is because from what I've always heard, and again, everybody's different, is when you feel the pocket collapsing, you keep two hands on the ball. And you watch Dak Prescott kind of with two hands on the ball do the little hip thrust. Yeah. What he's working on is I'm tur- I'm getting my hips loose. I thought you just said that it was a dance. <laughs> he's he's getting his hand his hips loose, but it's like I know I need to be able to from here with my hands on the ball. And for those watching the stream, can see what I'm doing. Hip, I'm thrusting my hips. Okay. Uh, but Calm down over you, there. <laughs> you should be able to turn show. with two and then separate. For some reason, Kirk is always like this with just one hand in the pocket every once in a while where that happens, the strip sack. And you're right. Like, it's like he doesn't sense that guy. How about you step up? That clock in his head. Right. It's not there where I feel like there's four to five times a game Kirk could get you seven, eight yards. And it's almost like he wants to be like, I'm going to wait to the last minute to make a throw. Great. It's worked out all season a lot. He's taken tremendous hits. And delivered some passes that were like, whoa, how'd he even do that? Yeah. But then there's got to be that. It's got to be the 50 50, like, okay, I'm going to do this this time. But hey, next time, I'm going to just hurt y'all. If I know you're in man coverage and everybody bails out and their backs are to me, I'm just going to go. Yeah. Like, I can outrun some 300 pounders. And that's what you should see more of that 10, 12 yarder he got. That was a bunch of, you know, 290, 300 pounders. Kirk's faster than them. Now, is he faster than 250s? No. But he's faster than those linemen. So he's fast enough. So you have to you have and to that is a know momentum that in the pocket. That's a momentum changer in the game and in a season in which we've seen historical comebacks and right. we've seen weird late stage magic, uh turnovers of the freaking century in the right spot at the right time for this defense and all yeah. those things. That touchdown to make it 27-10 or if they go for two and make it a two-score game at 27-11 with seven and a half or so minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah. That is a massive moment for this team. Do they come back? We didn't have it today because you were dead on about their energy and urgency. Mm-hmm. We were outmatched mentally today on the field, I think, in a big way. Uh, but all the same. I hold, didn't even do that. because I thought on to the s- freaking ball and step up in the pocket, When Kirk, you say please. that, in my head, I, I kind of thought about it 30, what, 34? If they had made two field goals, they'd have been down 11? Because it's been 23 to 34. You know, like all that kind of stuff goes back to your head. And we can't blame that on a kicker. Like six points probably doesn't make a huge difference. But it might make a little bit of a difference to decide to go for two and make it a 10-point game. If, you it's, know, 20, like, if it's 27-11, mid-third quarter, Rubes are excited again. Yeah. I'm pumped up. I'm out of my chair. I'm fist-pumping 10 on max. I'm running around here. I'm going to eat a couple extra slices of pizza. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, it's it's one. I mean, yeah. But of course, uh, they you know they go twelve plays, seventy six yards the other way. But in all every movie, and I and I've said this all season. Shout out to Candace Anderson because she loves the movie. Uh, oh, with VN, conversations, yeah. yeah. Um, but in a movie situation like this, Kevin Costner is playing Kevin O'Connell because he's the coach, or uh, it could be Brad Pitt. I don't know. I don't know who would play Kevin O'Connell in the movie twenty years from now. It'll be probably Zac Efron. Um, but Zac Efron playing Kevin O'Connell twenty years from now in the Vikings historic season movie. There has to be this moment too, though. They you have to get beat up, like every boxer, Creed. You know what I mean? You have to like the Russian beat him down. You have to do that. You have to go through it because then you Wasn't have to understand. Wasn't that what the Cowboys game was for? You needed you needed a couple times a, though. again because you climb back to the top. Oh, Think about so Creed. Painful. Remember Creed was the champ, then gets beat, then is the champ, then I'm, gets absolutely destroyed. I'm familiar. Then he's the champ again, and that was yeah. a new one coming. And, and Caleb Truax, shout out to Caleb. Sure, he bought up. He he's not happy with the new storyline of a of a of a boxer coming out of jail. You can't ready get to up take if on you don't the title. Fall down exactly. Yeah. Okay. So they, I mean, what time better to fall than now, and actually understand how serious your season can end. You know what I mean? Because if you win these, and I'd say great would have been to be, you know, whatever, what, that 15 and three or 14 and three, that would have been great. But that also could lead to like, oh, we're the two seed, let's, let's, or we're the one seed because the Eagles lost. And then we, we walk in and get absolutely punched in the mouth because we are not ready to fight. Well, that's, hey, that's one thing I'll say this regardless. Even if we had won today, there should be no arrogance and pompousness right. in that locker room with but the way they next got to 12 the wins. Bears somehow do this to the Vikings. No, I don't want to think oh, about that, goodness. okay? Can we just lose like a one-possession game. Just lose a tough one, you know, maybe miss kick plays into Jaylen a, Hurts a bad decision. Jalen Hurts 200 yards, <sighs> just, and they just, oh. I can't imagine a line next week if that I, happens. I feel like we were put And they're still feet, going to the playoffs, we, but We were man. put feet first into the wood chipper, Ron, and it's painful. Deadpool 2. Oh. <sighs> That's Ron Johnson. I'm Eric Nordquist. At this point, we are going to let the the network 
go. And um, I apologize. I wish I had better news. But 41 to 17 is indeed the final. And uh, next weekend, uh, as a matter of, do we have, uh, I believe it's a noon game at this point. Or if we've uh, received any any confirmation, because as of now, I don't have a direct time on when it is. But you know what we'll do is an hour before kickoff, you're going to join us on the Vikings radio network. And we're going to pump you up for the boom for the regular season finale at Soldier Field. Uh, we'll do fan line as well. And then it's off to the playoffs. But at this point, stick around, whether it's Pat, Joe, Zach. Uh, we're going to continue Vikings fan line on our home station, the flagship, 100.3 FM, the fan and also via the free iHeartRadio app. So Ron Johnson's here. I'm Nordo from 9 to noon, 800-320-5326. The free talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening. And uh, it's not my fault that the team lost, okay? But we're going to come back and we're going to win, damn it. Uh, Vikings fan line. This has been KFAN and the Minnesota Vikings Radio Network. Offense dropping dimes and hitting the gritty. Make Evans your favorite logistics team today. Evans will be your signal caller. You can jump on their backs and ride to victory. Get ahead of the competition right now and have a great experience while you're at it. Visit EvansTrans.com. Again, EvansTrans.com. When I started, it was just me and my tools. Now, while my team is out working, I'm running the business. Couldn't do it without Stacy from Choice Bank. Wouldn't have time to pick up the musical saw either. She put together financing to fuel our growth and a new benefits package for our employees. Stacy saves me loads of money and time. Time I spend making sweet saw music. Choice Bank. We're committed to your business, your success, and to you. It's what we mean by people first banking. Go to bankwithchoice.com. At Chevy, the holidays mean going places and doing the things you love to do with friends and family. To make new memories on the trails in a Silverado 1500, share new moments with old friends in the Chevy Blazer, and to take the family new places in the Chevy Equinox. Chevy makes it easier to make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Head into your local Chevy dealer first to find your red tag and find your deal. Where you go from there is up to you. Get $500 red tag bonus cash on select popular 2022 and 2023 Chevy models when you find your tag. Visit ChevyRedTag.com for more details. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Available toward the purchase or lease of all 2022-2023 Silverado 1500 and Silverado HD pickups, 2022-2023 Blazer, Equinox, Traverse, and Malibu models, and 2022 Colorado pickups. Not available with some other offers. Take new retail delivery by 1-323. Hey, football fans. It's time to treat your family with a mouth-watering Carboni's Pizza, wings, or a hot hoagie for the game. Carboni's Pizza was voted Best Pizza Twin Cities and has been serving pizza the whole family loves since 1954. Carboni's only uses the freshest ingredients and secret recipes to ensure your family is happy every time. The legacy of two hopeful young Italians is still present in every visit, every exchange, and in every bite. Over 30 locations to choose from. Find yours at Carbonis.com. Hey, Minnesota fans, it's Paul Allen. Know what the legendary Purple People Eaters and Timber Tech decking have in common? A dominating defense. Timber Tech has the durability to hold up against Minnesota weather for decades. Not only will it not rot, warp, or splinter like conventional wood, but it looks more like real wood than any other composite brand. And with up to a 50-year warranty, you're protected season after season. Order free samples at TimberTech.com to see the boards for yourself. TimberTech, everything wood should be. Football season means tailgating, touchdowns, and cheering for your favorite team. In Minnesota, there are nearly 100 local credit unions with over 300 branches for you to team up with to take your money further. Credit unions stand for community and trust. They keep any profits local and provide members better savings rates. Your teammates own a credit union, and that means you're all working for the same goals. More transparency, more trust will give you more personal financial wins. Visit minnesotacreditunions.org to find your local credit union to take your money further. Norman, we need to pause this surgery. What, doctor? Well, we need to hurry to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. New Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, when you add two 
lines of Xfinity Mobile, you get $500 back for a limited time. Drop everything. Get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023 to learn more. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. The Twin Cities home for Viking stock. FM 100.3 KFAN. The Fan. Fanline on iHeartRadio and The Fan are presented by our broadcast partners. Minnesota Credit Union Network, Youngstead's, Carboni's Pizzeria, and by your local Chevy dealers. Join the conversation on Vikings Fan Line by calling 800-320-5326 using the talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app or by sending us a message on the KFAN social channels. Now, continuing to take your calls, talkbacks, and social message, this is Vikings Fan Line with Ron Johnson and KFAN's Eric Nordquist. Welcome, whether it's 100.3 FM, The Fan, or the free iHeartRadio app. Thanks for joining Vikings Fan Line, 800-320-5326, 800-320-5326. Or utilize the free talkback option on the free iHeartRadio app. Just hit that microphone, give us your best 30 seconds, and uh, we will air it. Uh, thanks to Max Fuller for producing. Uh, Ron Johnson, uh, he just left. I'm sure he'll be back uh, at any point in time at his own convenience. Uh, the Vikings, uh, at their own convenience, didn't show up today at Lambeau. 41 17 is the final. The Vikings fall to 12 and 4, uh, which is one game remaining in the 2022 regular season. And they fall out of uh, the graces of the second seed in the NFC playoff race as well, due to the Niners' victory at Las Vegas in overtime. Robbie Gold from short distance. They get out alive with a victory. Uh, they now are the second seed in the NFC, which means the Vikings, uh, while being able to host a playoff game on Wild Card Weekend, uh, would find themselves potentially on the road for the remainder of the postseason. Uh, Ron now with me as well, and let's just jump right into the phone lines. And uh, as soon as uh, my mouse starts to work, we will chat with Joe in Scottsdale. Joe, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, guys. Hey. Um yeah, Ron, I, I love your comment about Alexander, and it's almost like we need a goon, uh, you know, parallel to a hockey game where this guy completely got in to Jefferson's head. He was doing a lot of extracurricular pushes. Uh, even that tackle Jefferson made on the interception, if you look at the replay, Alexander went flying into him out of bounds um, and, and just... We need someone to step up and take care of that guy. And the other thing that I thought played into uh, Jefferson's performance was the turf conditions. I don't know if anyone's talked about it tonight. I've never seen a lamb blow with uh, such lousy turf conditions. When they showed close-ups, I mean, they usually have that thing taken so well care of, covered in rain, and but it seemed like we were slipping all over the place, and they weren't. But uh, anyhow, love to hear your comments on maybe uh, what we could do if we face the Packers again or when we do to try to uh, negate Alexander's, I guess, uh, play on Jefferson and uh, just see if you think the turf conditions may have even come into play on some of the injuries we had uh, with our center, et cetera. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, Joe. Uh, your thought, so J.J. had to change his cleats, yep. and, and we saw yep. several players, T.J. Hawkinson, slipped and all of those things. Correct. Uh, I didn't see the Packers slipping. So right. is And so, I, to be honest, as an outsider, I don't know how that works in terms of, you know, are you using uh, replaceable cleats, uh, the, the physical studs on the bottom, so yep. now we got equipment guy rolling in there with a Phillips head, trying to, or an Allen <laughs> wrench, trying to, you know, add a quarter inch to your cleat, yep. or do you just bring a complete second pair of cleats and how all of that comes together? Uh, but the, the green and gold w it seemed to be quite comfortable running all over us uh, today, and we were not so much, specifically early on. Yeah, I mean, it's their field, so they know. They know what cleat to use. They know, I mean, trainers and, and, and um, the equipment staff, uh, Dennis Ryan and, and, and Adam, uh, they they have a bunch of stuff in that in that little box of theirs. So they have numerous cleat types. They have the, the, the uh, changeable spikes. They have the molded. They have actually the old school, like, 
kid rubber ones. I mean, they have all types of different cleats for different players uh, based on what you are normally, you know, traveling with. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure at some point when Justin slipped, the trainers or the equipment guy came over and said, hey, you probably need to switch to this one or just a three-fourth or whatever it might be, uh, inch cleat. Hey, let's switch them out. Um, but, yeah, the Packers are used to it, so they know exactly what cleat to wear on that field. They know when and where to step. They know how to stay under control, and it's about being under control. Like I said, they it, it felt like the Vikings weren't under control at, at points in that game, whereas Jai Alexander and the defensive guys, they they had it. Like, they had that game in control. That at yeah. no point did it feel like they were out of control. But, yeah, it's the cleat thing is, I don't know. I, I really don't know that one because it depends on how bad that field is. Pat in a dyno, welcome to Vikings fan line. I'm wondering why they don't ever throw the ball anymore to Adam Thielen. If J.J. has covered all that much, why in the world can't they utilize Adam? I dig it, Pat. Good point. Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for know. calling in. Kirk's not looking his way. I, I don't have his stats in front of me, but Thielen's, and, I, and maybe it's just somebody asked a feast, that being Justin Jefferson, Yep. and someone then would go through a stretch of famine. That has been Adam Thielen. Most recently. Now, I don't have a season stats. Let me see if I can pull up the actual well, box I said score week, numbers. Like week three. Thielen had four targets, just the one reception. Yep. He and, and I thought, you know, speaking of, of targets, I mean, one of them was tough. Like, and if Thielen, I guess, if he catches it, it's the opening drive, I think. They go three and out, and it's that third and short. And he's just being covered like a blanket, I think, by Roswell Douglas. Mm -hmm. And it's just a short route. He runs it short of the first down marker. And then it's a tough throw, and it goes incomplete. But And then on that interception, you got Thielen running deep. So we know he still has some wheels. And he had the safety beat if it's maybe a bit overthrown versus right. underthrown and picked off. But Thielen hasn't been getting all the love. And you know you understand the idea of taking a backseat to a budding superstar, but... Ever since, uh, ever since T.J. Hawkinson came on, he's been he had 12 targets again today. Uh, I think he has the most receptions of any tight end over right. the time that he's been here. Yep, uh, among the the most yards, maybe second only to Kelsey, is nearly 500 yards yep. uh, since joining the purple and a few touchdowns as well. Uh, and and then K.J. jumps up like it's uh, like Thielen has become kind of the odd man out, despite making a uh, a fair dollar yeah. for his participation. Well, I mean, you have kids, so. Adam Thielen is like a bicycle. He It's easy. Once you get back to him, you remember how to do it. It's it's like, oh, this is my favorite thing to have. I can go outside. You ever buy those things? You get in that giant box, and then it takes you like two hours trying to put that thing together? No, okay. never. Yeah. I, I, have, I, I bought one this Christmas for my daughter, and I made sure it was put together. I drove all the way to Maple Grove. Smart play. Just to find one already put together and not just in a box. Because they're okay. like, oh, we have one in the box, and, and I was in um, uh, Bloomington. And they were like, oh, we have, they're like, but we have one in Maple Grove that's already put together. Oh, I will go to Maple Grove. I'm not going to waste my time trying to put a bike together. So is Thielen, um, is Thielen a bicycle bike. in a box or is he pre assembled? No, he's or does pre assembled. That matter? But okay. there's the thing. But Christmas, you know, if you were to get a PS5, you're going to play that all night and all day and all night and all day. And you're not going to get bored. You're just going to keep finding new until eventually you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go back outside and ride my bike. I got that bike. So. You know, yeah. and and I think that's the thing. Like, TJ Hawkinson is a brand new PS5. That's a brand new toy for Kirk and Kevin O'Connell. Thielen is is the consistent bike that you forgot that was in the with garage. some sort of software issues with all these blocks, <laughs> uh, these drops. That, that was today. Been... That was today. That was, uh, you got to do thing. the thing. You got to get home and do the update. If Don't you, worry, there's an update coming. If you're you really into self-torture, watch the first half. Actually, for him, <laughs> save for that two point conversion, yeah, it was watch weird. that indie game. It he's, was, he's had a, he's had a few absolute yeah. L games early in that game. Though it was weird because I was watching my, my daughter said the same thing. Like, what is going? Like she screamed. Like, what is going on? Like it was weird. Like it was it was it was not T.J. Hawkinson like. No, you know even and this is one thing. If you're gonna run some trick plays on the goal line with th that many weapons, I don't think you need to get tricky. Like no. you don't. Like if you watch the Chiefs, like you just bought up Travis Kelsey. They're not tricking you when they want to throw a fade route to Travis Kelsey. You know exactly what they're going right. to do. They're putting Travis Kelsey out there. You just and can't stop it. Exactly. Yeah. Why not? Like, we saw TJ Hoggins and Moss, two players last week. Why not just put him out wide for the If you're going to do something for the first play, put him out wide. If not, put CJ Ham in the game and put as many big dudes as you can put and just run the ball down their throat. And let's see who's meaner and who's nastier and who wants it. Now, if the Packers beat you, Fine, they they wanted it more, but 
if I'm I'm not going to get tricky, I'm either going to throw a fade route to TJ Hawkinson, I'm going to put Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, and KJ Osborne backside, and I'm going to put K, uh, TJ Hawkinson frontside because I'm I want more space with him. And I'm a you show me you're gonna go double team him. If you do it, now I got my man to man matchup with three on three on the other side. Cause there's only five DBs out there. And then if you put six or seven, I'm running the ball. Like it's it's math. It's simple math. The numbers just just find the mismatch. You I got agree. too many weapons not to spread them out and do that. I 100 percent agree with you, but I, I'm starting to see a trend with some of these new coaches. It's like when you were, you know, if we're just gonna use um analogies here. Um, it's like the first time you learned how to, you know, on a computer, use Microsoft Paint. And now you're just, <laughs> now you've, you, you've just opened yourself up to a new, uh, just a whole world. And it's like, whether it's Mike McDaniel or, and, and even Kevin O'Connell. Yeah. You want to talk about cuteness on offense at times? I mean, McDaniel today at, yeah. in New England was doing like quadruple handoffs and reverses and stuff. Yeah. Versus just daggering the weapons he knows that he has in Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Very true. That's a thing that you know they will do. Those guys running across the middle, you know what's going to happen and you can't stop it because they are amazing. But then there's this weird, they can run the ball effectively without having Mostert toss it back to Teddy. Then there's a reverse and another handoff. And somehow after eight real time seconds, Mostert has the ball again and he hasn't even <laughs> crossed the line of scrimmage yet. True. The, the cuteness and uh, earlier in the season, we saw these little bits that KOC had uh, specifically inside the 10 and inside the 5. Some mm -hmm. of his red zone stuff to close on touchdowns was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, the Jalen Rager uh, run play in London. Uh, JJ, or JJ, I think, was in London. I forget where, where Jalen's was. But uh, but the, the Irv Smith in Miami, that mm -hmm. block, and then led to him being completely uh, wide, open, yep. wide open in the back of the end zone. But then we had the jump pass. Yep. We don't need yeah. the jump pass. No, you don't. No, Dalvin no. Dalvin is here to do a lot of things for us. The jump pass ain't one of them. Leave no. that to Derrick Henry. And so I just, I don't know if this is a trend, if it's a generational thing, but it's not just Kevin O'Connell. These yeah. young play calling head coaches are doing a lot of weird bleep and it's all the window dressing. Meanwhile, Andy Reid's like, huh, you guys just don't get it, do you? You got, someday you will learn, but right. there's times to be tricky and there's times just to handle business with your best options. Yeah, Jay-Z said it best. I got 99 pass plays and the jump pass ain't one. I like think, he's got to, they they got to stop that. that like a, it's, you just got to run through them. That was a great song. It was. It just gave me a parody idea for nine to noon. <laughs> uh, it's Vikings fan line. A couple more segments to go. JJ, Jim, Rochelle, Scott. Uh, we will get to your calls. Uh, put a finishing touch on uh, on this 41-17 battering in the border battle at Lambeau. Packers beat the Vikings today. Not all is lost. Still going to be division champs. Still uh, one of the host seeds in the NFC playoffs. Just not the two seed. And we're all a little bit stung right now. 800-320-5326. Free talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app as well. Ron Johnson's here. I'm Nordo. This is Vikings Fan Line on the fan. Hey, it's Chris Hockey, the Pirate Trip Morning Show, with my friend Ian Youngstead. Ian, your family at Youngstead's wants to keep people safe on the roads this winter. Yeah, hey, Hockey, that's true. Right now, you can get tire rebates of up to $200 on select sets of four tires. And as always, when you purchase any set of four tires, you'll get a $50 Youngstead's promotional gift card to use at a later visit. This is a savings of up to $250. Also, keep your car clean this winter with a monthly unlimited car wash membership. Yeah, you can sign up online or visit one of our car wash and detail centers located in Chanhassen, Excelsior, or Maple Grove. Youngstead's.com. What's that slogan again? Our family taking care of your family since 19. Hey, it's Moss. It's so exciting to move. Unless, of course, you gotta move yourself. That's why I love two men in a truck. Whether you're going cross-country or just down the street, two men in a truck can take the stress out of moving. They also offer fast, inefficient junk removal. So wherever life takes you, for home or business, two men in a truck can get you there with fewer headaches. I've known them, I've used them, and they are amazing. Always courteous and professional. So stop stressing. Do yourself a favor and contact two men in a truck for your next move or junk removal. Two men in a truck the movers who care at chevy the holidays mean going places and doing the things you love to do with friends and family to make new memories on the trails in a silverado 1500 share new moments with old friends in the chevy blazer and to take the family new places in the chevy equinox Chevy makes it easier to make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Head into your local Chevy dealer first to find your red tag and find your deal. Where you go from there is up to you. Get $500 red tag bonus cash on select popular 2022 and 2023 Chevy models when you find your tag. Visit ChevyRedTag.com for more details. 
Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Available toward the purchase or lease of all 2022-2023 Silverado 1500 and Silverado HD pickups, 2022-2023 Blazer, Equinox, Traverse, and Malibu models, and 2022 Colorado pickups. Not available with some other offers. Take new retail delivery by 1-323. Hi, I'm Braxton, and I'm a cancer survivor. I created TB1 Fund to help other patients and families at M Health Fairview Masonic Children's Hospital going through similar life-changing situations. My goal is to provide experiences and day brighteners to help patients stay positive. To learn more about me, my foundation, or to become a teammate, visit tb1fund.org or my Instagram, teambrax1. No one fights alone. We got this. Football season means tailgating, touchdowns, and cheering for your favorite team. In Minnesota, there are nearly 100 local credit unions with over 300 branches for you to team up with to take your money further. Credit unions stand for community and trust. They keep any profits local and provide members better savings rates. Your teammates own a credit union, and that means you're all working for the same goals. More transparency, more trust will give you more personal financial wins. Visit minnesotacreditunions.org to find your local credit union to take your money further. At Evans, we know that defense and big stops wins you championships. But when it comes to logistics, moving forward is key. Ben Lieber here for my guys at Evans. If logistics were football, Evans would be an explosive offense, dropping dimes and hitting the gritty. Make Evans your favorite logistics team today. Evans will be your signal caller. You can jump on their backs and ride to victory. Get ahead of the competition right now and have a great experience while you're at it. Visit evanstrans.com. Again, evanstrans.com. Hey, fans of the purple and gold, it's Paul Allen. And if you're sick of trying to tackle your deck maintenance, then rush over to TimberTech. TimberTech looks more like real wood than any other composite brand. And it's tough enough to handle even the harshest Minnesota weather. Want to lock up some protection too? TimberTech offers warranties that give you up to 50 years of coverage. So if you're ready to build the perfect place to kick back at kick off this season visit timbertech.com to get free samples timber tech everything would should be you've got to listen live Kareel Kaprizov with a huge goal to third the wild play right here all season long KFAN on iHeartRadio and FM 100.3 Minnesota station for hockey Thirty-seven Cousins over the middle, knocked away as he looked for Hawkinson, and in fact, it bounces into the arms of a Green Bay Packer, and it's Darnell Savage to the left side, 50-40. Savage gets the sideline. Touchdown, Green Bay! They have two return touchdowns, one via kick return, and that, a ball that went bounding off the hands of TJ Hawkinson into the awaiting arms of Darnell Savage, who scores the first touchdown of his career. It's a 66-yard return, and Green Bay leads 13-3. Welcome back. It's Vikings fan line. 41-17 was the final. That touchdown you heard there played into it, and certainly the pick six by Darnell Savage. It's got to be the 12th or 13th pick six of Kirk Cousins' career. Uh, again, the deflection off of TJ Hawkinson playing the atopic role in that. But your calls, yep. 800 320 5326. Ron Johnson's with me, Nordo. Now let's get back to the phone lines here. Let's go, uh, Rochelle from Eagle Bend. Welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Well, hi, good evening. Um, just want to say I love your show and I'm a Vikings fan. And, um, I, I wonder if what Kevin O'Connell would think about all our questions and ideas that we have on the air when we're talking about all of, you know, like what happened today. It wasn't a good game, obviously, but um, I, I just wanted to ta- uh, talk about a couple of subjects real quick. Um, our defense uh, really wasn't there today. Uh, we gave points to the Packers, I thought, when they were threatening to uh, score on us. And uh, there were a couple of plays even in the fields where there was no Vikings presence. Um, how can we better um, our defense? And uh, my other my other idea was, or question was, how can we better, like, trick plays? Um, I know that we uh, lost a couple uh, men today because of injuries, and almost both of them were important. But we have a huge team. So if we could throw trick plays in there, um, and throw all these teams off because if they're going to read us like a book from, from cover to 
it's from beginning to end, they're going to know us like the back of their hand. And, and so maybe throw, throw, you know, maybe throw trick plays in there and, and, and mentally and, and just, you know, um, try something different. Um, like I said, we have a whole team of good players. I, I believe we have a good team and I hope this is our year to go to the Super Bowl. Um, but those two, those two subjects I just touched on really need help on our team. So I'll hang up and I want to listen to what you have to say about the defense and maybe some trick plays and what we can do to better that. Yeah, I dig it, Rochelle. Thanks for, thanks for listening and calling in. Uh, first to the defense at this, at this stage of the game, Ron, it's, it's kind of the conversation we've been having. It's, it's perpetual, it persists and it's, uh, it's eternal. The, the level of blitzing, right? right? I mean, over the course of the year, I think they were, they were least in the NFL for a long stretch and it was somewhere in the neighborhood, of like 15, 16, 17%. Right. But then now over the last few games, we've seen that change. So it's not going to be wholesale. We're not right. going back to a 4-3. Correct. But we can put more pressure in certain spots. I think Patrick Peterson came on a quarterback blitz today. Correct. Uh, they've been, whether it's to rest players or not, Brian Asamoah has been a lot more in the mix in recent weeks. Uh, Eric Kendricks trying to get to the quarterback at his first sack of the season a game or two ago. I think it was in the Colts game specifically. Uh, they, they've tried it. Now, I, I will say this, Ron. Whatever it takes to get this thing better, I, I, I honestly don't believe that it's going to happen in 2022. Uh, today is is great evidence of that, where the fallacy of the run defense, where for weeks people would talk about, hey, you know what, we're, we're, at least we're giving up fewer than 100 yards a game here on the ground, right? And then the Colts game happened, and they they smack us for a buck 71. Uh, Matt Ryan can't throw to save his freaking life. Historic comeback. We We come out winners. But in this game today... They got every yard on the ground they wanted, and we knew it was coming. And, and that's really the biggest turnaround to the Packers' season right now is their ability to functionally run the ball, and they're getting productive reps. And you're seeing 30-plus carries a game uh, over their four-game win streak now. Um, I just I, – I don't – and we'll bring it up next week. We'll bring it up, I'm sure, in a playoff game. I right. don't think there's anything that's going to get better. What we are seeing is what you're going to get. Right. And maybe in that process, we're the ones getting the turnovers and not them. Their guy's throwing the picks and not our guy. Correct. So, And that could be the change in a game. I just don't believe that there's any any elixir right. that can make this thing a, a, even a top 12, 15-ish unit. For defense? No. No. No chance. You can't. You can't yeah. It's, it, it's over. So this is the thing I look about this defense, and I just did it for the Vikings.com. Uh, my three takeaways I do weekly for Vikings.com. And... One of the three takeaways was the third quarter this week. The third quarter historically for this team had not been great. It, it, they were allowing 5.3 yards per carry. How was it this week? This week, I, the third quarter, they didn't allow a score. So the third okay. quarter was scoreless. There we go. That was the one <laughs> takeaway. They, I think they had 11 touchdowns, which was not good. Um, they, 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 I think it was like 77 first downs they had allowed. See, not you gotta, good. You got to feel good um, about that, right, Rochelle? So, right. Absolutely. So they, they got better in the third quarter, but then they were bad in the first, second, and fourth. So oh. um, th this is where I go with this. Four they, quarters. They, game. they, they have, they mm -hmm. do. And Kevin O'Connell says this. I think Shannon Sullivan said it on the pregame show today on Fox with uh, Tatum. They do just enough. They do just enough to win. They do what it requires to win these games. Now, today it didn't happen, but with this defense, and again, you have to take your players. I'm not going to use P.J. Fleck because he said this before because I know it's not the P.J. Fleck show, but when you take your players and you look at what they do best, then you create what you're doing defensively and offensively with what you have. Like, if you don't have five receivers, you can't go five wides. If you don't have two tight ends, you can't run a two tight end offense because people keep saying, they're like, why don't we go two tight ends more? With who? You don't have two. Now, if you had, if somehow Irv, you know, was healthy and TJ, you traded for Hawkinson, I don't know if they would have done that. Yeah, you can definitely do that all game with those two. You can go five wides with TJ Hawkinson, Irv Smith, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, and Justin Jefferson. Like, that's nuts. Yeah. But you don't have that. You know, like, you have to use what you have. And so when you look at that defense, I just don't see them like they, you can't make a drastic change and go four three because you don't have that many defensive linemen to rotate in. You know, you you've picked up all these extra kind of wiry DN linebacker types. So you got to do that, which is, I think, at one point, all four guys were standing up 
And because I heard Romo try to bring that up, like, uh, who's I don't know who's the D lineman right now. Which that's that's why you do that. I asked Mike Pettin at the beginning of the year, when are you going to do that? So that was the first time we've seen it. Yeah, where they all just stand up and you don't know who's the D line, you don't know who's coming. Like you said, you saw pressure coming from Chandy. You saw Peterson come off the edge. You saw uh, Hicks come. Like maybe do that more. Like if that's what your bread and butter is. I mean, we're watching the the ba- uh, Bears, the Steelers, Ravens. They both do it and do it well. Like not this year, but you know, normally that's what they do. So yeah, you gotta you gotta find ways to create pressure, but use the guys. Like I would be okay if Daniel Hunter was the only guy with his hand in the ground. And everybody else around them was standing up, and let's go have some fun. Let's see what happens. Force them to run the ball. But at least you're not going to get big, you know, 30, 40 yard chunk throws because you're going to get after the quarterback. Scott and Pryor Lake, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, guys, how's it going? Just driving home from the game, so I got to, I got to play. Um, my question is, is the coach. So um, I think. All the fans see all the post game. I'm going to put you back on hold. Great. I'm going to push you back on hold, Scott, because your uh, your your service is is hideous. So safe travels. I'm going to try it again uh, in a we bit. We know Green Bay doesn't have a lot of cell phone towers, so we get it. Yeah, it's roadkill and toilet paper. JJ in Zimmerman, welcome to Vikings Fan Line. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, I just want to ask you guys a couple questions. I haven't heard anyone bring it up yet. Um, how can we avoid and or wait? Who's that fault for the 10 man in, on defense that won series? And then not too long later, we had 12 men on defense. I mean, we were in kind of a must win game. We had the number two, number, number two seed we had to lock up and then potentially get the number one seed. How can we avoid this going forward? Um, in for the playoffs, and uh, yeah, and then another thing too about the movie. If we want to cast uh, cast uh, cast for a movie, I think Kevin Hart would be good for Kevin O'Connell, and Two Chains would be good for Adam Thielen. I don't know you guys' thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, JJ. Uh, to the ten man part, I think it's after that strip sack. Yeah. And they go down, and then it's 34-3. Games, you know, game was probably already out of reach. But, again, if we just get that touchdown there, make it a two-score game. Simple answer. Ten minutes on the happen. field, it's the player's fault. Somebody yeah. wasn't paying attention because of the quick change. They were over there with their helmet off, and they didn't hear defense on the field. Yep. So that's one on the player. Because you can even see two players on the sideline kind of thinking, like, oh, should I go? Should you go? Should I go? I didn't hear the call. It's on the players. The 12 men, it's on the players. But it's probably was a late substitution because you could see one guy trying to get off, and Aaron Rodgers does what he does best, which is catch him. Yeah, and so it just happens. Yeah, the uh, I don't know about the movie role thing. Yeah, Kevin Hart is Kevin O'Connell. Is that what he said? Yeah, Kevin's like six five. Yeah, he's also white. This team's this team's just unstable. Is like, is what it comes like? I get it. I'm all for African Americans having a chance to play every role, but Kevin O'Connell's an actual person, so. That's like that's why I hate when like I think Tom Cruise played like the last of the Mohicans. Like there's certain people or whoever did it. Like you know certain roles if you know it's real. <laughs> but like Superman, <laughs> Spider Man, yeah, all those. Yes, you can have a black or white person. I don't care who's there because those are fictional cut characters. So you know people mad about Michael B. Jordan playing Superman. Get ready. But yeah, Kevin O'Connell is Kevin Hart. Uh, no, yeah, that's 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 horrible. He's got to be on a bunch of phone books, right? I can see Kevin Hart playing like Dalvin Cook. Like, I don't know if Dalvin Cook's funny, though. I don't know if somebody's... Like, I can see Kevin Hart playing, like, Chris Boyd. He can play Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd is probably the most talkative player. Right, and that's why, yeah, Kevin Hart could do that because he would know how to, you know, talk some crap and, you know, be that little gnat in your ear every play, you know, (laughs) always getting into it with somebody. Yeah, I could see that one. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, though. Let's do one more quick segment of Fan Line around the corner, and we'll try uh, Scott from Prior Lake as he uh, finds his way home from Green Bay. We'll we'll talk to Matt and Jim as well and wrap up uh, this 41-17 to drubbing that the Vikings endured at the hands of the Packers today. Uh, Nordo uh, from 9 to noon, that's me. Ron Johnson, that's him. Max Fuller produces another segment around the corner. This is The Fan. 
Hey, football fans, it's time to treat your family with a mouth-watering Carboni's Pizza. Wings or a hot hoagie for the game. Carboni's Pizza was voted Best Pizza Twin Cities and has been serving pizza the whole family loves since 1954. Carboni's only uses the freshest ingredients and secret recipes to ensure your family is happy every time. The legacy of two hopeful young Italians is still present in every visit, every exchange, and in every bite. Over 30 locations to choose from. Find yours at Carboni's.com. At Chevy, the holidays mean going places and doing the things you love to do with friends and family. To make new memories on the trails in a Silverado 1500, share new moments with old friends in the Chevy Blazer, and to take the family new places in the Chevy Equinox. Chevy makes it easier to make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Head into your local Chevy dealer first to find your red tag and find your deal. Where you go from there is up to you. Get $500 red tag bonus cash on select popular 2022 and 2023 Chevy models when you find your tag. Visit ChevyRedTag.com for more details. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Available toward the purchase or lease of all 2022-2023 Silverado 1500 and Silverado HD pickups, 2022-2023 Blazer, Equinox, Traverse, and Malibu models, and 2022 Colorado pickups. Not available with some other offers. Take new retail delivery by 1-323. I'm Angela Warner with Warner Stellion. And if you know me, you know I love a good bargain, which is why I'm telling you about our year-end appliance clearance. Our stores are packed with red-tagged closeouts, scratch and dents, and floor model appliances priced to sell so we can make room for next year's models. And if you buy more now, you save more. Get an additional 10% off two red tags and 15% off three. You'll still enjoy our famous free delivery by our trusted specialists. So hurry into your local Warner selling to score a deal before they're gone. Maybe it's hair in the sink or hair on your pillow in the morning or hair in the shower. All signs your hairline is headed in the wrong direction. When that happened to me, I went to Hair Restoration Institute. I battled back, restored my hairline and made an investment in my future. Find out why Hair Restoration Institute was named Minnesota's best hair restoration clinic by the Star Tribune. Go to MyHairLossClinic.com or call 612-588-HAIR. You can't spell hair without H-R-I. Go to MyHairLossClinic.com or call 612-588-HAIR. Football season means tailgating, touchdowns, and cheering for your favorite team. In Minnesota, there are nearly 100 local credit unions with over 300 branches for you to team up with to take your money further. Credit unions stand for community and trust. They keep any profits local and provide members better savings rates. Your teammates own a credit union, and that means you're all working for the same goals. More transparency, more trust will give you more personal financial wins. Visit minnesotacreditunions.org to find your local credit union to take your money further. Quick Trip brings you quick, hot savings. We're making a splash this month with our Nature's Touch Milk. Just $2.99 a gallon. All our one gallon, 2%, 1%, and skim Nature's Touch Milk is on sale and ready to hit your fridge. Oh, how can you beat fresh straight from our dairy milk that's ready for movie night milkshakes? Or to make those morning waffles extra fluffy. Hey, we got you covered with quick, hot savings. Only at Quick Trip. At Evans, we know that defense and big stops wins you championships. But when it comes to logistics, moving forward is key. Ben Lieber here for my guys at Evans. If logistics were football, Evans would be an explosive offense dropping dimes and hitting the gritty. Make Evans your favorite logistics team today. Evans will be your signal caller. You can jump on their backs and ride to victory. Get ahead of the competition right now and have a great experience while you're at it. Visit EvansTrans.com. Again, EvansTrans.com. This is the radio home of the Minnesota Vikings. Boom! FM 100.3 KFAN. Minnesota's home for football. on Hollins. Uh, Cousins throws left and it's caught Jalen Naylor at the 2015-10-5. Touchdown Jalen Naylor. The first touchdown of Jalen Naylor's career makes it 41-9. <laughs> hey, we love our local Chevy dealers. And each and every week we are tasked with finding a local Chevy dealers drive of the game. And, well, that's the one, folks. Four plays, 59 yards. 
Jalen Naylor gets his first NFL touchdown, 47 yards via Kirk Cousins in the pass. Extra point is good. And that, uh, I mean, we're coming, we're coming, come back, anything's possible. With seven and a half minutes left, the Vikings made it 41 to 10. So thanks to our local Chevy dealers, the drive of the game, 41-17 was the final. The Vikings lose. It was an awful game. The Vikings, I believe, since winning there, they swept the Packers in 09. Uh, they are 3-8-2, and two, something like that, at Lambeau Field. Tough place to win. Uh, your calls, final segment, Vikings fan line. Ron Johnson is with me, Nordo. We're going to try uh, Scott in Prior Lake one more time. Scott, are you still here? Hey, guys, I don't know if this is better. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Cell, phone re- cell phone towers in Wisconsin, scarce. Absolutely. Um, my, uh, my, my, I was just more or less curious to get your thoughts about Kevin. So what I was saying is, you know, I think the fans' perspective is that he's a – He's a he, he's a positive guy. He's got a ton of leadership qualities. He seems like um, a, a really true a motivator of men. Yet something's up, right? Because we have too many games where the team comes out and they're just not playing with like a sense of urgency right out of the gate. I think a caller mentioned this earlier too. Like I just don't I don't get that. I don't get if it's on the players to come out with like that urgency, that intensity. Um, but to me, some of that's got to be coaching, like having the team kind of playing angry, pissed off, whatever it is. I was thinking, you know, the players go into that game and they see the Eagles lose, and so they're like, oh, you know, we can get the one seed. And what do they do? They they come out and kind of play uh, with a lack of urgency like we've seen all too often. And I, I'm thinking the Bears game, right? I mean, and normally like our record versus the Bears record, you would see some sort of, eight to 10 to 11 point spread will probably be like a four point spread go down by three. Maybe the game's 10 to seven by half, like something's up. So, I mean, I like Kevin, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be negative. It just seems like too often we're not, the players are just coming out really, really flat. I'm concerned. Just want to get your thoughts. Appreciate it, Scott. Safe travels home. And uh, I, I can't necessarily disagree. And, and I absolutely love Kevin O'Connell and you can see the changes in the locker room. Uh, the, the culture, I think, has been created. And that was an A topic for him and Quasi Adolfo Mensa when they took the reins here. But it's similar to our conversation that we've had not only today, but in recent weeks. And it kind of tells a story, again, of an unstable team. That's the way that I look at it, where it is so much boomer bust with this offense. We're going to see the three and outs. I think we had eight or nine of them at Miami alone. Eight or nine three and outs. That's preposterous and unacceptable. But sometimes, But somehow... Again, in their wins, they're averaging 29 points a game into this weekend, Ron. They were the seventh highest scoring offense in the NFL. But they're also still going through such nasty lulls where there's some inconsistency. And to his point as well, the urgency that the team showed in early stages to fight their way through this thing uh, and 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 put themselves in a position to compete, uh, it, it wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so the flat, coming out flat, no answer for that. Like, like I said, the Packers just show more urgency than the Vikings. Um, it, it's like, you know, an animal when you corner them. Some animals are going to fight their way out, and the Packers did that today. I mean, they're talking about the win percentage or the chances of making the playoffs now. Uh, you got the the Rams at a 20% chance. You got the Lions at a 16 And because of the way the Packers won and who they play versus who the Lions play, they gave the Packers a 64% chance now because they're just saying – like they they think the Packers are in it. Like they're going to beat the Lions from what they think. Hopefully the Lions can knock them out. And that's all they have to do. That's all they have to do to beat the Lions now. And so, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where they had that urgency. So I don't know if it was if the Vikings maybe played a team like the Bears this week. Would it have been noticeable? Maybe not because the Bears looked flat too against the Lions because the Lions had something to play for. I don't know. Like it, it just, it wasn't there. As far as creating it, it's a player thing. Like some a, a coach can't. I forgot who said this, but a coach can't make players go out there, especially millionaires, go out there and play any harder than they want to play. That has to be in you. That has yeah. to be one of the players to get it going. The pregame speech, whoever the players are, whoever the guys are getting it going. A big hit by somebody. You know, that's the, that that like that pass breakup by Jair and then the gritty. That got his team going. Oh, yeah. If Justin Jefferson makes that catch. Who knows? The butterfly effect. It might completely change JJ's mentality. It might completely 
make make like Jair like, oh man, it's gonna be a long day. This dude already got me the first play of the game, you know, or first whatever drive. Like, you just never know. Matt and St. Paul, welcome to Vikings fan line. Hi guys. I just want to say Justin Jefferson is not our guy. I think from what I saw today, we need Jalen Naylor to be our wide receiver one. What do you guys think? Do you think we need to bench Jefferson after today's game and make Naylor our number one guy? <laughs> I think I think it's it's an out of the box opinion, Matt. I absolutely love the creativity in it. You're out on JJ. You're all in on Naylor now. <laughs> all right, final call of the evening. Love what have that. you done for me lately? I guess. By the way, it, ceremonial items such as records when you're trying to keep the two seed, you know, they're all secondary. JJ needs 192 now in the final game to pass. Or 193 to pass Calvin Johnson, but we just need to win that game. Hope Correct. Arizona beats the Niners. So that's that's what yeah. That 2000s out the window at this point. I don't. I just yeah. Probably Jim from Medina. Final call of the night. Hey, hey guys! I just want to say you guys are awesome and rocking it out here at 8:30 p.m. Absolutely appreciate right. you. What do you got? Yeah. So basically, I want to say Kirk Cousins isn't getting it done. Jordan Love is a free agent next offseason. And I say we start Nick Mullins next game and maybe even for the playoffs and then sign Jordan Love in the offseason. What are your guys' thoughts on that? You know what? I'm not against it. You know, Mullins and that pocket presence, Ron. I mean, that late touchdown he threw, he's looking good. You up for benching, Kirk? No. Nick Mullins to Jalen Naylor, touchdown? No. You're not open to that? No. All right. Well, but wait, did Jalen Naylor throw his to KJ Osborne? I thought Kirk threw his to Naylor. Uh, Kirk threw his to Naylor, Mullins to KJ. KJ. Yeah. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. I okay. flipped it. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's so late that so we So it's got... Kirk to Naylor. So the key is Naylor has to be in the game now. I mean, we're at the stage where we got 10 year olds calling in to <laughs> troll us. I, we get it, okay? The team was terrible today. Nobody needs to get fired. We should have drafted Brock Purdy, Mr. Relevant. Yeah, and he looked so bad today. He did. I mean, that that four-leaf clover thing out there is going to wilt. And whether it's the Packers going out there, if they beat the Lions, and maybe end up playing the 49ers. Yeah, we'll see. And the Packers go beat the uh, Eagles. Vikings play the Packers in the NFC Championship game. At U.S. Bank Stadium. At U.S. Bank Stadium. A man the three versus the seven seed. Uh, here's, what, here's the deal. is The team's 12-4. and four. They're currently the third seed in the NFL. And uh, we have one game left to finalize all of that. That would be the Chicago Bears. It's a week from today, and the time at this particular moment has not been established. Uh, but it is at Soldier Field, and of course, uh, you will be made privy to all intel uh, as soon as we have it. And uh, go get a win, finish the regular season 13-4, and four, and then the postseason begins. Uh, thanks so much to Max Fuller, Brandon Molesky, Tena B. Uh, thank you to you, Ron. Looking forward to celebrating uh, regular season finale next week via fan line. But uh, coverage starts. Power trip, you know, they're, they're soft. So they're not starting the show until 7 a.m. tomorrow. 7 to 9, the power trip. And they do have Adam Thielen on weekly. So maybe uh, they'll ask him about like, hey, why aren't you getting any catches anymore, dude? Uh, but hear that with the power trip, 9 to noon, sad montage. And we'll break this thing down uh, as well. So thank you so much for listening and uh, enjoy your home for Vikings football, the fan. Everybody have a great night. Hey, Minnesota fans, it's Paul Allen. 